Hey everyone and thanks for checking in. This video is going to go over how to determine the price of a bond, the market price of a bond, or a valuation of a bond, or really any cash flows uh, with an annuity and a, and a future value uh, with semi-annual payments. And, and actually this could be used for, for any, any payment frequency, but, but uh, there's a video before this addressing the same bond with annual payments. If you're looking for, for just one compounding period per year, there's another video that I just posted that talks about the same bond in the context of annual compounding. So I'm going to show you very quickly the information we're working with um, and the, the formula that we have that we're using in Excel. And we're just using the simple present value formula. You can see this listed here. And uh, I lay out these boxes this way on my spreadsheet because I think it's, it's helpful and it helps us organize the information we're working with. So this is the formula that we're using, present value formula in Microsoft Excel, and this is the data uh, that, that we're using for the, the bond itself. So we have bonds that are five years until maturity, $1,000 par value or face value, whatever you might want to call it. They have a coupon rate of 8.5% and a yield to maturity. Now our job is to find the market price, right? What's the present value of these cash flows? So in the previous video, we talked about this bond in the context of annual compounding periods. And you can see the information, I left it on here just to give us a, a benchmark. So if we use annual compounding periods, we have that $1,000 face value, which we're gonna get at the end of the fifth year. We have the $85 coupon payment, which again is the 8.5% coupon rate times $1,000 gives us an $85 per year coupon payment when we're discussing this in the context of annual compounding. We have our uh, yield to maturity, which we get is the cost of debts at uh, K, lowercase d, that you'll see in a lot of these books, uh, but that's the yield to maturity either on the current bonds now or similar debt. We use that as the discount rate, if we're going to translate this to a time value of money conversation. And we have five payments in this situation because it's a five years until maturity and we have annual payments. So a lot of these textbooks and a lot of problems that you'll solve, you know, actually in industry, deal with different compounding periods. So you just saw the data translated here into our formula or into our, our, our box, our table that we're gonna to use to figure that out. Now, if this was annual compounding, everything looks a little different because now we have two compounding periods per year and we have to change a couple things. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take this out so we can fill this in together. And this annual compounding area here translates to this with semi-annual compounding. So our future value is still gonna be $1,000. We're still gonna get that $1,000 at the end of the five years. Our present value is still unknown. That's what we're searching for, right? But our payment is different. Instead of having an 8.5% coupon rate times $1,000, for $85 per year coupon payment, we now have the semi-annual payment. So instead of getting one payment of $85 at an 8.5% coupon rate, we're gonna get two payments of $42.50. How do I figure that out? Well, because there are two compounding periods in a year, and we have an 8.5% annual interest rate we have to divide our annual interest rate by the number of compounding periods per year, which again is, is going to be 8.5% divided by two for two compounding periods. That $85 coupon rate then becomes two payments of $42.50. Same, let's just skip this for now. When we deal with our payments, it's going to be the exact opposite, okay? So we took our 8.5% coupon rate for five time, five total times, so annually 8.5% for five years. Now we have payments of 4, 42.50, right, or 4.25% twice a year. So instead of having five $85 payments, we're gonna have 10, payments of $42.50. So we take the number of years until maturity and multiply that by how many compounding periods we have 
in a year. So instead of having $85 five times, we're going to have $42.50 10 times. Now, that still leaves us with the yield to maturity. We have to treat that the same way because we're dealing with semi-annual figures, right? So we're not going to have a comparative cost of debt or, or a discount rate of the full annual amount, 11%. We're going to do the same thing we did to our coupon rate and divide that by two because there's two periods. If this were quarterly, we would divide it by four. If it were annually, we'd divide it by 360 or 365. But we're just dealing with semi-annual compound. So we take our rate that's given for yield to maturity of 11%, divide that by two, and that gives us 5.5%. So as opposed to the... $907.60 present value, what this is telling us is that because there is more frequent compounding, we can actually still pay a little bit less, not much, two bucks, we can still, or a dollar, we can still pay a little bit less for the bond and achieve our goal of earning 11% annual yield to maturity. So, you might need to watch this video once or twice. The simple, quick solution is that instead of five payments of $85, there are 10 payments of $42 because it happens twice a year. We also have to divide our yield to maturity by two because it happens twice a year and we want to compare semi-annual yield to maturity as opposed to the annual yield to maturity. Walk through this a couple times you'll start to catch on. Again, the same formula works, whether it's semi-annual, quarterly, weekly, daily. You just have to divide your coupon rate and divide your yield to maturity by the number of compounding periods and multiply the number of years by the number of compounding periods per year. I hope this was helpful. Thanks.